Hello, this is Matt on the Moon Lambeau channel. There's been a fair bit of talk since, uh, well, since the SEC versus Ripple news came out on uh, December 21st. There's, there's been talk about uh, this idea that uh, XRP might not be participating in this market cycle. It may not pop. It may not rally. And uh, it, I'm not convinced of that, and I'll explain why. But even if you are convinced of that... I want to share with you that uh, this idea that there might be more time in this market cycle than many analysts were expecting there to be. You know, a lot of analysts have been saying, and some still stand by this, that there's only another 9 to 12 months left within this market cycle, which makes it less likely that XRP would have an opportunity to burst. And so even if you buy that argument that it will not burst without SEC clarity, might still be in the clear here. And so there's this headline from the Daily Hoddle. Mike Novogratz predicts Bitcoin rally will extend into 2022. Here's why. Which is important, of course, because Bitcoin absolutely leads the market. And what you saw in 2017 was Bitcoin hit its peak in the latter part of uh, December 2017. And it, XRP actually did hit its all-time high after that, it was uh, its all time high came on January 4th. But still, you know, even if there's there can be a little bit of gap between when Bitcoin hits its XR hits its all time high and then XRP hits its all time high this market cycle, uh, you know, it's, it's it's still this idea persists that if there's a longer time period, you know, to uh, for this market cycle, it could bode well for XRP. And there's a case to be made for that too. Like, I mean, I'd prefer when X, whenever XRP does finally burst, I'd prefer that there be legal clarity because then there's no question as to, okay, is everybody participating that, uh, that would have, uh, regardless of this, the situation with this uncertainty from a regulatory perspective. So there is that, um, I do want to be clear that I don't have a financial background of any kind. I am not offering financial advice and you should not buy or sell anything because of anything that I say or write. I'm just an enthusiast. I'm an XRP holder. Nothing special about me. I like talking about this stuff as an enthusiast, and I run this YouTube channel purely as a hobby. That is all that it is. But I very much appreciate all of the support. So uh, into this first piece. The CEO of the crypto management firm Galaxy Digital says, Bitcoin's bull market is far from over. In an interview on the Alpha Trader podcast, Mike Novogratz says, Bitcoin is poised to go higher in the next 22 months as big banks hop on the, uh, the Bitcoin bandwagon. And check out this quote. We've kind of passed the Rubicon. If you will, we're over the hill. The network effect of this is really taking off. What I'm really convinced of is we're still really early on the adoption cycle for big institutions. You haven't seen the big banks come out with their offerings yet. Let me tell you, with certainty, they are coming. I will be really surprised if Bitcoin is not higher this year and higher the year after. And so uh, let, me, let me say this first. You know, as far as this idea of XRP not participating in this market cycle, not having some sort of parabolic rally, uh, I, I simply don't buy it. I understand how pe why people started thinking that it wouldn't or won't participate because you saw the massive crash um, after the SEC came out after uh, against uh, Ripple. Uh, and, you know, these claims of XRP being an investment contract, an unregistered security. But what did you see after that? After everybody that was scared and got out, uh, that wanted to get out, did end up getting out, what, what happened? XRP resumed, uh, moving in tandem with the market. And, and I pointed that on a ton of different occasions visually. So that if you're a human with eyeballs, you can actually see it. I pointed out whenever it's abundantly clear, which is fairly frequently. And in addition to that, you've actually seen according to many chart analysts, and I think it is playing out, that XRP is actually in a, um, in a, a, a bullish technical analysis pattern, right? And, and so we have seen, again, as, as I record this, I, well, I didn't check right before recording this video, but what's it been around? Hover around 40 cents above that, at times a little bit below that. Well, that's a lot higher than 17 cents, which is what it dropped to after the scary news of the SEC going out against Ripple. And so uh, the way that I'm looking at it is, and you could say, okay, so even if it runs, it's still it's still not going to have a rally in line with what it could have been, you know, uh, had the SEC not been going after Ripple. But I don't really buy that personally. I, I don't think that's the case. Maybe there'll be some people that won't touch it no matter what. But in terms of the vast majority of what its potential is, I still think it's going to hit it this cycle regardless because... 
uh, given that I firmly believe that XRP is moving in tandem with the rest of the market, it's just a matter of time. And because what will happen ultimately is there's going to be a, this moment where there's a spark and it catches on. XRP starts to pump to a sufficient degree that it catches the attention of what I would call, I would label as the uh, the useful idiots out there that see, ooh, something's pumping. Uh, pumping me. I'm going to move my money into that now. It's just this idea of chasing the green candle like lemmings off a cliff. And I, I'm not going to behave like that. I just I just believe that other people will still behave like that. And so even if you're going to have less participation, uh, it, most most of the reduction in participation would come from the United States, which only makes up about 10% of total trading. And, and not all of that 10% has stopped participating. I'm in the United States. I'm participating. I'm holding XRP. And so, you know, there are exchanges that still are allowing, you know, they are on ramps and off ramps, you know, for fiat currency. So... I still think it's going to happen because when XRP ran up to almost $4 last market cycle, mind you, it was people throughout the rest of the world that made that happen. And so then you're talking about all of these big banks that are potentially coming in and institutional money, publicly traded companies. You know, this has been an institutionally driven uh, market cycle to this point, and we're not seeing that slow down, you know. And so that's why it doesn't seem bonkers to me. That uh, that this could go on longer than what many analysts were thinking, because if the institutions keep putting money in, that's effectively them saying, no, we're not done here. Because what's going to happen? Well, that's going to affect supply and demand. And then even if they're purchasing over the counter so you don't see those market impacts immediately, the rest of the useful idiots out there trading on spot exchanges have less crypto to fight over. And that's what drives the prices up. It's not the direct purchase by these mega institutions that immediately drives the price up. It really isn't. Um, indirectly, that's exactly why. But it's the useful idiots having less to fight over that makes them bid up the prices for Bitcoin even higher. And if Bitcoin goes even higher, the rest of the market goes even higher. And you could potentially have a prolonged market cycle. And so that's kind of what we're talking about here. And so the piece continues. As Bitcoin continues on its extended run, the Galaxy Digital Executive highlights key factors driving the growth of the leading crypto asset. And here's a quote again. COVID changed everything with the macro backdrop of hard assets. And Bitcoin is so well developed, created to be a hard asset that the adoption curve accelerated. Uh, Paul Tudor Jones looked at it and said, wow, this really does work as a hard asset. It's the single largest distributed asset ever outside of the dollar. And so you've got this community building that's, uh, that's going on telling the story of why it's important. And so to me, all of that makes sense. And so we'll, we'll see what the charts keep keep hinting at. But I'm telling you, like the, I think the charts will show what, uh, what Novogratz is expecting here if indeed you continue to see an increase in institutions coming in and snatching up the little bit of Bitcoin that's remaining. And then that's going to trickle down to the rest of the market. And I highlighted this. Uh, this is a piece from the Daily Hodl from January 28th. And it's in, it's in line with the same type of thinking. I just wanted to mention, I don't want to go through the whole thing because I already did like a week ago, but the headline is, is this. Binance CEO says he expects this Bitcoin bull cycle to last four years. Uh, here's why. And he goes on to cite that, uh, I think, here's a quote. I think 2021, 2022, 2023, uh, it's going to take two to three years, maybe four years for this sort of cycle to hit the peak. I kind of predict that we are just in the flat part of the wave. The big wave hasn't come in yet. And so he, he, he seems to be in lockstep in terms of thinking, yeah, this is going to go a lot higher before we see any sort of corrective action. And indeed, big money, it's coming in, but there's most of the big money, the vast majority of it, is still on the sidelines. And that's exciting because I think a ton of it will flow in. So it's kind of a question of, is it going to flow in this market cycle or uh, during a bear market or a subsequent cycle? When is a ton of it gonna really start flowing in because if it is this market cycle i think there's a case to be made that you, you could be looking at a, a bull market for multiple years and so i don't know if that'll be the case but it, it seems like a plausible position take a look at this headline from the daily hodl billionaire elon musk exploring bitcoin adoption for corporate treasuries says on-chain capital co-founder well how about that who isn't going to be at least you know, just at a minimum looking into this Rand nooner Co-founder of blockchain fund management firm OnChain Capital says Tesla CEO Elon Musk is exploring the possibility of adding Bitcoin to his corporate treasuries. In a new tweet, the former host of CNBC's Crypto Traders 
tells his 124,000 followers that some of the executives attending the World.Now event were sent there by billionaire Elon Musk. And here's a quote. I can confirm that Elon Musk had at least three people at the Michael Saylor event, uh, including two from the Treasury. And then the piece continues. On February 3rd to February 4th, MicroStrategy hosted the World Now event, during which Michael Saylor and other Bitcoin bulls invited corporate executives to learn about the benefits of adopting Bitcoin for their corporate portfolios. On-chain analyst and trader Willie Wu asserts that Bitcoin supplies are already drying up after Saylor preached Bitcoin's advantages to the corporate community, calling the event a success. And here's another quote. Looks like Michael Saylor is bringing Hope.com to the corporate community. Impacts are being seen already. Coins once again being scooped off exchanges. And and it was, uh, he, as stated by Michael Saylor, it was effectively an unprecedented event in, in the, just the pure number of individuals that signed up. I could be mistaken, so I apologize if so, but I think there were like 1,400 executives or something like that that signed up, many of them being CEOs. And again, this is about purchasing Bitcoin as a as a corporate treasury reserve asset you know if 1400 that sounds can you imagine in 2015 anything like that happening not a freaking chance this is the maturation of the asset class and so all of this if they decide to start looking into this you know it could take them any you know six nine twelve months to if they're even going to do it to look into it get approval go through because they got to go through if it's a publicly traded company undoubtedly a board of directors uh everybody in all, all sorts of different departments from accounting to legal uh, you can just imagine the whole rigmarole that it would be that they would absolutely i mean if they're going to actually adopt bitcoin as a treasury reserve asset that's no small thing but if it happens it, it's what i'm saying is it's going to take that long and so you could see six nine twelve months from now people are starting to look into it today if they do purchase massive quantities this bull run may not be ending anytime soon which gives xrp even more time to uh, to, to achieve regulatory clarity and so if it does then there will be no argument that uh that, you know, whatever ends up happening in this market cycle, the SEC didn't ruin it, at least. Um, and again, I don't think that they would ruin it. I, th I think that it will run up regardless. But if you're talking about potentially settlement occurring this calendar year, or, or maybe maybe finality of all of this uh, early next year at the latest, uh, we'll be good, we'll be, what, right? So even if you were worried about the time, which again, I'm not, but even if you are worried about that, uh, it could, we couldn't be in a position where this market keeps going. And so even if XRP kicks off later, okay, fine. Like, I'm just going to sit here and be patient. I'm not going to be a child about this. I don't know when XRP is going to burst, but I personally believe that it will. And uh, I'm going to be here for it. I'm just going to be positioned. I'm going to outpatient anyone else. And uh, and, and that's just my position. Because I've been saying for, forever, I'm going to either ride this bitch to zero or it's going to be worth a freaking fortune. One or the other. To me, it's like an all or nothing type thing. Seriously. And I don't know for sure what's going to happen, but I'm very optimistic. I am Mr. XRP Bull for a reason. But I will go ahead and wrap up there. Thank you for stopping by, my friends. I am not a financial advisor. Do not buy or sell anything because of anything that I say or write. That would be a very, very, very bad idea. Until next time, to the moon, Lambeau.